and welcome back to another Bob Blast. Hi, I'm Bob Burridge, and this one, I love this subject, neutrals. What are they? How do you make them? And I hear that word kicked around all the time. I just like to throw colors around. But then one day somebody said, what about neutrals? Now let me show you how it works. Basically, neutrals are complementary colors right out of your your chart, your colored wheel, whatever, opposite across from each other. Here's a green and a red. Mix them together, you get this incredible gray, but you gotta add a lot of white to it. And you're gonna you get these beautiful color. This color here, I would have never known how to get that color. It's more of a neutral. So it's a combination of blue and red and a whole lot of white, which kind of makes it a kind of a purple. It depends on what brand of paint you're using too. So I had to make a chart for me. This is what hangs in my studio. So let's say I wanted to do this color as a background. I use them as a background. And I just know I need this yellow and that blue, kind of a cobalt blue, mix it up with a little bit of black and a little bit of white until I get the color that I wanted. Who would have thought? Who would have thought? I wouldn't have. And I just kept going, doing, doing all the different color combinations. I really like some of this. You know, again, it all started out with purple and green. Purple and green, I got kind of goofy here, and put it together, you'd be surprised how dark that color gets. It's kind of like, wow, it's a beautiful color, but I didn't want the dark color. I wanted it more of a neutral. So all I need to do is add some white to here, and some more white to it, and look at this beautiful color. That's the color I wanted. I would have never known without making the chart that that color came from this purple and this green. And that got me all excited. I decided to make a whole bunch of more charts. So here's the blue and yellow, the blue and yellow. So yeah, I turned into green, but I added some black and some white. And I got this beautiful background color. I really love the softness. And then depends on how much white you use, you can, from one color, you can get all these different values. Oh boy. And then after it dries, I put those two colors that I use to make that color, I use them raw, right out of the tube. Squeeze it, and those colors are just gonna jump all over the place. So let me show you how I do it. My art materials are acrylic. This is a little demo in acrylic painting. I go into mixing blue and yellow and a little bit of black, and a little bit of white, right here on my table. My table is covered up with a plastic, a four mil thick plastic. So what's really great, <laughs> now I have a much bigger palette. And when this paint dries, you can peel it right off after a couple days, right back down to the original clean plastic. Cool, huh? And I got plenty of white, I have my black, what I'm going for is kind of a greenish color, a lot of white. I wet my brush and I'm going to do the mixing here. And that's the whole idea. You do your mixing on the table, not on here. If I keep doing that, it's going to get muddier and muddier and muddier. So I'm just going to take a big gallop of that. This should be somewhat greenish. Oh yeah. There's that green. I wonder what would happen if I added just a pinch of black in there. Oh yeah, it does kick it up, it makes it darker. But the color I'm looking for, is gonna have a whole lot of white in it. Oh, look at this color with white in it. This is, can either be titanium white, or it can even be gesso white. It's a beautiful color, wow. And you can still adjust it here. Let's see what happens, add just a little bit more blue into it. I don't follow any more crazy formula and proportion or anything like that. I just keep mixing until I see the color I like. There we go. Oh boy. It's fun to mix this color. Especially if this, this is a Holbein acrylic paint. It's considered thick body. And it is, look how tall it stands. It's because there's a whole lot of pigment in here. Uh, so just for fun, just for fun, I'm going to uh, wipe it on because it can dry quicker on top of this if I wipe it on. So I wet my paper towel a little bit like this. 
get a big glob of it. Oh, this is gonna be great. What a color. Yellow and blue, a little bit of white, a little bit of black. So I tone my paintings before I start. I tone them somewhat of a mid-tone. There we go, like a mid-tone. So that way I'm, I'm halfway done. I just have to put the darkest darks and the lightest lights and that's it. So I, I work on three different values mostly. So something like that. And sometimes even at this point, I might even start scraping and scratching and do all kinds of cool things like that. Make sure I have a fingernail. And, and just, I like to draw. I like to do it this way too. <laughs> Talk about the freedom. I love the freedom here. If you don't like it, you know, you can always get rid of it. <laughs> oh no, he's getting rid of his drawing. I like it. So, now I have a mid-tone of a combination of yellow and blue, and a little white, a little bit of black, and I mixed it all up until I got the color I wanted Bam, that's it. And I rubbed it in. I'm, I even like the whole arm action. Using your whole arm, not your little pinky finger like this. Get into it. Get involved. You're a painter. Be a painter. All right. So, sometimes I just can't leave it alone. <laughs> I think it's called painting. I love painting so much. There we go. So, again, I will let it dry. And now I'll come back and put on the pure colors. Let's see what that looks like. So after my background neutral color has dried, it's dry, it takes only about 15 minutes. What I'm going to go after is something like this. I used only blue, black, and yellow, and a lot of white. I was able to do this whole neutral background, and then the solid colors. Look how the solid colors ran right up the tube, come right at you, and the background disappears. That's the whole idea of a neutral. And it all works together because the background colors are made up exactly from the colors you have on the front. So it kind of holds together a little bit. But let's get started. So this one, whoa. I have another nice batch here. Let's go right into it. Wait. Again, do my mixing out here. I want this to be a, I'll do somewhat of an abstract painting. I already did the flower one, so I'm gonna do that abstract painting. Oh, loose composition. Some over here. Pick up some of the blue over here now. Oh, now it's starting to get a little bit darker. Isn't that cool? I like to paint all over at the same time. I like to have a place to go, too. <laughs> there we go. I think this just might be a goofy flower painting. Yeah, why not? You'll notice that the vase itself is going to need to come forward because it's pure, pure color right out of the, there we go, whoa. Crazy, isn't it? Kind of cartoony, but I like it. <laughs> More over the pair, and maybe some dark underneath here. Whoa, gives us some contrast. There we go. There we go. Fun, huh? Talk about loose. It all works together using just those two complementary colors and some white and some black. And do lots of mixing until you get the hue or the value that you're looking for. Look how it all just pops up all over the place. Hey, that's, that's how I get to have my backgrounds go background. Loose, goofy, you never know. That's a little bit more green than the one I originally showed you. That's cool, you never know. But mixing the two complementary colors. Now the yellow can be orange, 
It doesn't matter what yellow it is. The blue, quite frankly, can be any blue. Ultramarine blue, cobalt blue. Don't be so picky. Hey, it's blue. So have fun with this one. Mix it all up. And look, as loose as I am, the whole thing still holds together. Neat, huh? Now, I hope you've learned another thing to make your day more funner in the studio. Take care. I'll see you on the next Bob Last.